Hi, I'm Pastor Phil, and we at Souls Harbor Church of God are glad to bring to you inspiration for the day. So, sit back and enjoy our program as we exalt our risen Lord. I know you're asking my soul. His blood is covered my sin. I believe. I believe. Shame is taken away. Oh, my pain is still in his name. I believe. I believe. I'll raise a banner. My Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer. everything glorious he is glorious and we view the world we need to see the glorious part of God's creation and focus on that and zero in on what the Lord has put in front of our eyes that is beautiful and so today as we look into God's Word together let's look as Paul goes to Rome he is uh, looking forward to coming to Rome and he speaks in chapter 1 and verse 11 and he says, For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have planned many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have had among the Gentiles. Here he comes and he says, I want to come and see you. Oh, I tell you what, I get excited when somebody says, I want to come and see you. Amen. And when it's somebody you love, you can't wait to see them. You know, I like FaceTime. FaceTime is second best. 
You know, I don't have to drive to Orlando to see my grandkids' face. I can just look at that phone. But you see, I want to take my finger and hit it right in that belly button. <laughs> and I have to be live to do that. Amen. Oh, yeah, and watch them laugh real good, right? Amen. So Paul said, I can't wait to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing you and being with you and spending some time with you because I want to impart spiritual charisma. Charis is grace, and charisma is the gifts of God's grace. You see, the, the root word is grace, and the gifts come because God gives his grace freely, doesn't he? For by grace are you saved through faith, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So God gives us gifts because he loves to see ministry happen. You see, what's so great about the church is that God says when we all want to see each other, to come together so that we can all operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we bring into the ministry so that when the gifts come together through the church, through the body of Christ, everybody is edified, and that word edified means built up. How many of you know when you go to the gym, you get built up? When you went to the gym, maybe, or <laughs> some of you it may not be going, but you might have gone to the gym. Yeah. Amen. Now you've decided your exercise is walking. Amen. But when you get your exercise, you take that muscle and you work it. Yeah. Amen. Pumping that iron. <laughs> Amen. You see... As you build that muscle up, it gets stronger. How many of us know the Lord said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might? Amen. How many of you want to be stronger today than you were yesterday? Well, that means you've got to get out and do something. If you just lay around, you get atrophy. Your muscles don't operate as well. So you've got to get some motion. Motion is the lotion. <laughs> Amen. You've got to stay in motion. Get in gear. Amen. Amen. Now, some of you are in first gear. And sometimes it starts running a little rough in first gear. Amen. Some, somebody said it's in neutral. Amen. <laughs> Still in neutral. But I used to have that clutch, and I'd put that clutch in, and then I'd let off that clutch, and I'd let the hammer down a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? Some of you know where I'm coming from. And so, when you begin to get in motion, you get somewhere. How many of you know God is wanting you to get somewhere? He's wanting to move you forward spiritually. Well, to do that, we have to come together for ministry to take place, for everybody to be able to operate in their spiritual gifts. You see, is before the service starts, when you walk in the door, you're bringing in ministry come, is coming in with you. When you greet somebody at the door, you may be encouraging somebody. You may get a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. You may even get a prophetic word. You see, ministry, it goes on from the time you step in to the time you leave, you are ministering with the body of Christ. Hallelujah. You come in with a song of praise. How many of you come in rejoicing in the Lord? How many of you come in thinking about how awesome he is? How many of us come in thinking, Lord, there's going to be ministry that's going to take place today because the church is coming together for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says, we're the, all the body of Christ we all have different gifts operating in us and through us. But when we come, God wants the charisma to manifest himself. That means the expression of the Holy Spirit operating through human beings. You see, God loves to do extraordinary things through ordinary people. <laughs> yeah, extraordinary things through ordinary people because when God touches the ordinary, it becomes extraordinary. It's the touch of God. I heard about a fiddle one time. How many of you have ever played a fiddle? Anybody here ever played a fiddle? We got a few. Anybody heard of Charlie Daniels? He liked to play that fiddle. But you know what? Whenever they... they found this old fiddle, and they decided they'd auction it off, and, 
And they said, somebody give me $100. And nobody wanted to say anything. Somebody else, $50. And nobody said nothing. Somebody said, five, will you give me $5 for this fiddle? And nobody wanted to bid on it. And then a guy said, let me see that fiddle a minute. Grabbed that thing about like Charlie Daniels and started playing on that thing. How many of you will give me a I'll give you 100. How many? 200, 200, 300, 400, 500. The value went way up. It wasn't the fiddle, but it was the touch of the master's hand. How many of you are glad you've been touched by the master's hand today? See, Paul wanted to impart. That means the gifts of the ministry, there's an impartation that goes. You see, Philip went down to Samaria, and he won the people to Jesus in Samaria. And then he said, I'm going to call Peter and John to come over and to lay hands on them and to give them the charisma of God. The gifts of ministry. You see, it's one thing, we get saved, we're born again, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. When we say you're welcome in this place, we're telling God we're welcome in this place as well as this place, right? You're welcome in this place. Lord, your Spirit has made us welcome. Aren't you glad today the Holy Spirit is moving in you and through you? How many of you know he's going to accomplish his ministry in you and through you today? Because you are a vessel, and God has poured into the vessel the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and that anointing begins to flow out of you and touches somebody else next to you. You see, Tyrone, when you came in today, it brought joy to my spirit. I hadn't seen you in a while. And I said, you know, he's up in New York a lot of the time, so when you get down here, I get excited to see you. Because you see, God has bonded us together in the spirit. You see, God's got a way of bonding you together. And you see, we've shared. I've shared over in your home. And God has done ministry through these gifts of the Holy Spirit. You see, I understand that I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit to do ministry. I don't come before you in my own ability, but I come to you in the name of Jesus the Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, so that you can hear from God today. Amen. You see, I, I tell you what, I humble myself before the Lord. How many of you know that the Lord wants us to come to a place of humbling ourselves before the Lord? Amen. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he will lift you up. Yeah. Amen. He wants us to do justly and to live humbly. You see, when we come before the Lord, we come and understand that we're submitting to the Lord so that he can accomplish his ministry through us. And so Paul says, I want to come to you. I want to be a part of this ministry in Rome. You know, I thought about this is in the early days of Christianity and how the gospel had spread out. And Paul was preaching and ministering to all of these different people. And then they were going out and winning other people. And here they are in Rome, the center of the known world of that day. How many of you know the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation? He said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For herein the righteousness of God has been revealed from faith to faith. You know, God today has given us this glorious gospel. Hallelujah. And wherever we go, the gospel goes because we're carrying the gospel. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad today you have the gospel of Jesus Christ and you know it's the power of God that will break every chain, the power of God that will break the chains that bind your loved ones. You know, I, I've got faith that I can go to people that are addicted to anything and tell them that Jesus can break those chains. That Jesus can set them free. Amen. The Holy Spirit can empower them. So when I first want to get somebody saved, but next I want to get them filled with a charismata. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, the power of God to be released in them. Because I got news for you today. There are battles out there. 
There are temptations, but there is no temptation taken you, but such is common unto man. But for every temptation, God will make a means of escape that you might be able to bear it. How many of you know God will make a way? He's a way maker. I said he will make a way so that it, whatever the situation is, he will make a way when it seems like there's no way out, when it seems like it's dark as a dungeon. God is going to shine the light down from heaven and the glory of God is going to come upon you and the power of God's going to be released within you. I said released within you. Woo! I believe somebody's getting the Holy Ghost today. Amen. This is how you get the Holy Ghost, getting around people filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah, yeah, it'll rub off on you. Be careful. It's contagious. The Holy Ghost is contagious because when God is moving, it stirs the Spirit. And in fact, Paul, you know, he was so full of the Spirit, he wanted to get this message into the, all the Roman church. Because then you're not relying on your own strength, but on God's strength. Amen. Amen. You see, you can try to do something within your own power and your own strength, but you will get tired. You will get worn out, even doing God's work. People have, some, you know, they've gotten to the point where they got drained. But you know what God says, I want you to come back and get filled. Fresh, fresh anointing, fresh renewal refreshing in the presence of God in his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand are pleasures forevermore oh thank you Jesus I love to be refreshed in the Holy Spirit because you see the Holy Spirit is always here but you see sometimes I like to get around somebody else that's full and overflowing because sometimes see I'm, I'm receiving when I'm preaching I'm receiving from the Lord and it's like a wave and the wave goes out like this and then the wave comes back and I say oh glory to God <laughs> I said glory to God hallelujah I like to watch a wave coming back into shore. Amen. As long as it ain't knocking me against the shore. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Debbie was out in a wave yesterday, and she said, she said, I don't want to get knocked down by that wave. I said, honey, just go under it. I said, just let it go on the top, and you just, just go like this, and it'll just go right over you. She said, but it'll get my hair wet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Realize the important things, brother. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> don't want don't to mess up that hairdo. Amen. But you see, God sends the Spirit, and he moves in us and through us. And you're a part of what God is doing in me. Oh, isn't it good when we come together? When we come together... And we all have worship in our hearts, and it's like an explosion of worship. I said it's like an explosion of worship. The Holy Spirit is the dynamite. Dynamo in the Greek, and that means it's like dynamite. The dynamite explodes. Woo! <laughs> now, some of you that maybe aren't filled yet, you get around somebody that's sitting close by to you, and they're exploding. And you're kind of like, what in the world is that? <laughs> fireworks, amen. I like fireworks. It's getting to be the 4th of July next weekend. Woo! Amen. You see, God loves to impart spiritual gifts. Ah, there's the story of Abraham and his servant goes out to find a bride for Isaac. And so he goes out to the land that, where Abraham's from to find a bride. And, and he goes up and he asks this young maiden for some water. And she said, I'll give you water. She said, I'll give your camels water too. And he had prayed and said, Lord, if she says that, I know she's the one. And then he said, once he realized she was going to be the bride of Isaac, she began, the Holy Spirit began to be poured out. You see, just in the same way, he began to lavish upon this bride gifts of gold. 
It wasn't his bride, but it was the bride for Isaac. Now, Abraham is like the father, Isaac is like the son, and the servant is like the Holy Spirit. God sends the Holy Spirit, and he adorns his bride. Now, the bride never had seen the groom. I've never seen Jesus with these eyes. But what the Holy Spirit's told me about, ooh, hallelujah, about Jesus has created such a love for Jesus. I said such a love because he's my bridegroom, amen, because I'm part of the bride. I'm part of the bride that Jesus Christ is going to receive. He's the bridegroom, and the Holy Spirit's calling out the bride, and he's then lavishing upon that bride once she accepts the invitation gifts. And that servant would just tell Rebecca how wonderful Isaac was. And she said, I can't wait to see him. I can't wait to see him. And that's what's inside my soul. Because the Holy Spirit's told me so many wonderful things about Jesus. You see, this book is a book of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inspired the book. Amen. That's where the book came from. Holy men of old were inspired of the Holy Ghost. So when you know him... It's because of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, when he is come, the Spirit, he will not speak of himself, but he will speak of me. How many of you know the Holy Spirit speaking about Jesus today? I know Jesus better now than I knew him before I came into this service. Did you catch that? You know Jesus now more than you did when you walked in the door. Because the Holy Spirit has been showing you another dimension of Jesus. Come on. Amen. And when I get another dimension of Jesus, then I get pumped up because I understand who I am serving, who I am adoring. He has adorned me and I adore him back. Hallelujah. Because he has lavished on us. Oh, all these blessings. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as sons in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one that he loves in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of God's grace hallelujah unmerited favor I didn't have to earn it freely you have received now freely give Paul had received it freely so he couldn't wait to impart something into somebody's life you see Elijah, he was imparting into Elisha's life. Elisha, he wanted more. This is God's system, is God anoint somebody. He had the cloak, the mantle of leadership, and he gave it to Elisha on his way up into heaven. You see, the Lord wants us to leave a mantle, a mantle of anointing. And to minister, your ministry is an awesome thing, what God has given you. Every one of us has a ministry. I said, you have a ministry. And whatever your ministry is, flow in that anointing and operate in that anointing. And then be like Elisha and say, I want a double portion. I don't, want just a, I don't want just seven miracles. I want 14 miracles. I want more. Hallelujah. God, I want you to give me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Hallelujah. I want to be in the overflow of anointing because when I'm overflowing in anointing, then somebody else is going to start sensing that God is doing something. And then there may be something in their heart where the Lord is wanting to minister to them. And all at once, there'll be a healing touch. Remember the fiddle? When the master touched it, it came alive. How many of you know when the master touched you? You had this God awareness. You quit running from God. You started running towards God. You changed directions because you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that seed, that seed was birthed inside of you right here. How many of you know that that seed went into good soul? 
Are you going to be good soul today? Yes. Amen. I'm going to be the good soul that the seed can then begin to grow and develop within me and then produce fruit for the glory of God because God has given you fruit for your ministry. Yeah. <sighs> Ivy, I went over one time and watched her at work when she was working over at the rehab center, going in there, caring for the, all those people. What a ministry. What a ministry. God blessing and touching through her. And you know, then my Jamaican brother over there, Melbourne, her husband, me and him, we have to talk in an island language every now and then. I like to get in an island state of mind sometimes. Come on. I was at the store the other day, and, and I talked to a brother and, and a man, and I just said hello, and I said, are you from the islands? He said, yeah, man. I said, I thought so. Had that big island smile. Amen. Don't you love it? Don't you love God's variety? The way God works through everybody. That everybody is different, but yet we're all one in Christ. Oh, there's no division in the body of Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither male nor female. I'm one in Christ with you and with you. I am one in Christ with you, Larry, today, because we're one in Christ on our mission for the glory of God. And when we come together, we're stronger together. We know Jesus in a deeper dimension. Oh, let's come together in the name of Jesus the Christ. Let's stand together and give him the praise. Hi, I'm Pastor Phil, and I'm so glad you tuned in for our broadcast today. You know, we here at Souls Harbor Church, uh, we want to reach out to people wherever they're at in their lives. And so today is an opportunity that you've had to hear from God, hear from His Word. And I believe the Holy Spirit has applied it in your life so that it relates to your situation. And so I'm going to pray with you at this time. Father, I thank you that you brought your Word into our lives and I thank you Lord that even now you're speaking to our hearts and right now father I thank you that that living word is planted in our spirit and so at this moment it's coming forth in our lives and I want to thank you for that and I want to praise you for your work in all of our lives in Jesus name and amen you know you've taken a step of faith today God has heard your prayer, and He is going to touch your life and bless it in so many ways. So I'm glad that we had the opportunity to share in this moment together. And if you don't have a church home, we'd love for you to come to Souls Harbor Church and just experience what God is doing here. And so we want to pray and minister to you, whatever your situation is. We believe in the power of prayer to touch people's lives. And so this day, we send forth God's blessings to you, and may you continue to draw from his mighty power.